Hi folks, it's Andrew here, and today I'd like to tell you about the D106 Step Sequencer. This is a little module that I made a few years ago, back in 2011, uh, and it's part of my DINTREE series. You can download free schematics and see more details on my website, DINTREE.com. And uh, these are good starting points for DIY synths if you're interested in learning how to design your own circuits. We don't supply uh, kits or PCBs, but as you can see, these are just built on proto boards. I built a whole series of these within the matter of about two weeks. So they don't take very long to make. You can make these panels yourself on a drill press uh, with a template, which you can easily make in lots of cheap or free software. Um, and basically that's how it goes. So let me just explain how this sequencer works and then I'll go through the schematic and you can learn a little bit about how the circuitry works. So the sequencer is a four stage sequencer. It has uh, four pots like this and an LED beside each pot to show which one is the active one. There's four inputs and four outputs. The inputs are clock in, that makes it move to the next step. Reset in, which causes it to reset back to the first step. Direction in, which causes it to run in the opposite direction if there's a signal present on there. And scrub in, which lets you go be it back and forth be, uh, between the uh, stages using a, using a voltage instead of by uh, stepping it. And then there's four outputs, and the outputs correspond to the four pots, except every time you take a step, the outputs all rotate around by one position. So let's suppose that this LED were on, that's uh, stage one. That output would come out here, this pot would come out here, this pot would come out here, and this pot would come out here. And as you step around, these outputs would rotate. Let's say this LED were on, this pot would come out here, this pot would come out here, this pot would come out here, and this pot would come out here, and so on. And so that's kind of interesting. You can make uh, sequences that go round and round, and you can control things kind of like in a ping pong type fashion. So it's kind of an interesting module. In here, there's basically a power input, some filtering, a couple op amps, uh, microcontroller, this is a PIC uh, 16F690 microcontroller, really uh, small and inexpensive one. And then there's two multiplexer chips that actually do the, the sequencing. So let me show you the circuit diagram and you can see how it works. So the inputs are over here and the outputs and multiplexing are over here. The, these are the pots up here and then there's some LEDs that show the current uh, state of the uh, sequencer and then power supply filtering and bypassing for all the chips. A little regulator, this provides 5 volts which runs uh, the, the pots and also the microcontroller circuitry and so on. And uh, here's the power input connector. This is a regular 16 pin connector that's used on your rack stuff and there's two little filter caps here and then there's one unused op amp stage which I've just terminated over here. So let's talk about the inputs first. There's three identical circuits for all the pulse type inputs. The clock in, reset in, and direction in. Uh, these all get buffered by a little transistor circuit that I use quite often. This doesn't have specifically huge gain, you know, there's probably circuits that would work better, um, but I found that this is fairly good and reliable. It's really, really low cost and small, uh, especially in a surface mount board where you really need like a tiny handful of little tiny chips or parts to do it. Basically it takes a signal in here, goes through a resistor divider, there's two 10k resistors here. This makes the voltage uh, at this node here half of whatever the input is. And my whole goal with this is to have about a 1-ish volt signal be the sort of threshold to turn on whatever it is it's turning on. So if I put about a volt or a little more than a volt here, that'll create about what, 0.5 or 0.6 volts on the base of this transistor. This is just a 2N3904 transistor. And that will be just about enough to cause that transistor to turn on any uh, increase in voltage, and usually pulses and gates on modulars are about 5 volts or more. This also means you can put any voltage in, up to 10 volts or minus 10 volts, it doesn't matter. Um, as soon as this is ab above about 1 or 1 1.2 volts, this will turn on, and now the output of, of, of this here will go low. It'll be grounded to almost to, to the ground. And when it's not on, when there's a signal below 1 volt or so, this will be pulled up with a 10k resistor. 
all three of these circuits are exactly the same. Uh, it doesn't have specifically super high gain, but it's good enough for almost all uses that I've found it uh, to be useful for. Uh, in most types of pulse inputs, gate inputs, you want to have a wide voltage range, you want to protect your microcontroller from a wide range of, of voltages that might go in there, and you want to have a known point or a roughly known point at which you're going to switch the output on or off. Um, there's a fourth input, this is the scrub input, it's an analog input designed for uh, using uh, a voltage between 0 and 5 volts and that's designed to allow you to move across the stages using a variable voltage so if you put let's say an, a triangle wave input into there you would see the, the stages would linearly go up and down as the triangle went up and down. Um, the thresholds are set within software inside uh, the microcontroller firmware. Now, I've made a little change here. This has some diodes here, and this the, the idea here is to protect the input and clamp it from going too high or too low. So it's clamped to 5 volts and ground. This uses uh, 10K resistors, so the current will be quite limited going through these diodes. The only problem with this is that if this uh, op amp turns on, Sometimes the output of an op amp can, can sort of fluctuate or, or go crazy when you first turn on a circuit. In that case, it may be possible that this could pr produce a pulse of a voltage that's out of, outside the range for the microcontroller. Now, I've never had a problem with it. Uh, there is a 1K resistor in the output that would c limit the current to a pretty small amount going in here. Microcontrollers also have input protection diodes themselves, so I've never had a problem with it, but uh, a little tiny improvement you could make to this circuit would be to move these diodes to this side on the other side of this of this uh, of this resistor and that would provide a, just a wee bit more protection for the microcontroller although these 5 volt microcontrollers I found are fairly rugged uh, newer ones more modern ones the 3.3 volt ones that have a very low voltage core inside those can sometimes be a bit more sensitive but these older ones are pretty rugged and I've never had a chance to blow one up uh, so, what I would uh, suggest is, yeah, move those diodes to the other side. Um, all the logic is contained within the microcontroller, so this basically takes the three input pulses or gates, whatever you want to call them, uh, and it also takes this analog input and it basically decides what to do, and all it can really do is can count forwards or backwards, and, and light up the various LEDs and, and select the correct inputs over here. So the way the analog portion works is that we've got five, or sorry, four pots. They're connected to five volts, so they can make a voltage between zero and five volts. And the pots are wired in a very specific combination to the four sets of inputs on these two multiplexer chips. These are a 4052 multiplexer chip. Uh, basically, they have two input signals that selects one of the inputs, and they have two sets of four inputs each. So they're actually dual. They can s switch two signals, but there's only one set of selecting pins. So if you put zero, zero into the A and B inputs, you'll get the zero input on the first s section and zero input on the second section. So you can notice the two output pins go to both chips. They're in parallel. So when, when, I've, when I've set a zero, zero on here, I'm going to get the zero output on every of the chips. However, the inputs are staggered in such a way that there's one pot goes to all the different inputs one at a time. So let's say step one goes to input zero on here, goes into input one on here, two on here, and three on here, and each of them are wired that way so that they rotate around. So there's always one pot connected to one input. That's basically how it works. And the outputs go out from each of the multiplexer outputs, and they just get buffered by some just unity gain op amp buffers over here, and then they feed through some 100 ohm resistors to the output, and that's basically it. So at any one time, any of the four states that you could have this in based on the, f the four possibilities of these two inputs, there's just a binary input, any of those four states, there's always going to be a pot connected to every output. Uh, these LED outputs, of course, are not binary. They, we want to just show one, two, three, or four. So the code that uh, outputs the signal, it chooses a binary signal to set to the set the uh, multiplexers up, and then it also sends out a signal that 
lights up only one of the LEDs at a time. And that's really easy to do in software, so that's why that was done that way. And then that's basically it. As you as you step this, and you can step it really fast. The code, uh, you know, is really really small inside here. So you could put a really high speed clock in here, and it can rotate that all around, and it can select the correct s a set of bits on here. And these analog pots literally just get wired up to the various outputs. Now you could replace these pots. You could put uh, input connectors there, and you could feed uh, other kinds of signals, audio or control voltage signals, in there, and that would work as well. Um, the range of, of signals that you can put into this are, are pretty wide, actually. Uh, now, I've only put a 5-volt supply and a negative 12-volt supply on here, so the positive would be somewhat limited. And the reason for that is that this chip can't actually take uh, a wide enough range of voltages for plus and minus 12. Most of these chips are limited to about 18 or 20 volts across the rails. They have plus and minus inputs on these particular ones. Um, so check the data sheet on the one that you use to make sure that it can actually take the voltage range that you're uh, expecting to use. If not, you can make some smaller power supplies like plus and minus 8 volts. That's a common one uh, that you can use uh, or something else to make it fit within the range of voltages. But this is a pretty interesting circuit, uh, pretty simple, and I hope that uh, you found it interesting.